Welcome to Worship Online with White Bear Lake United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Bill Eaves, and together with Pastor Christine Ford, I thank you for joining us today. White Bear Lake United Methodist Church is here to provide nourishment for the hungers of life. In our worship today, we trust God to nourish our hungers, and as we pay attention to that, we'll find new ways that we can go out and nourish the world around us. I'm glad you're with us today. Leave us a comment so we know you're here and let us know how we can pray for you. And now let's worship together. What lies ahead, I'm not sure I know. But the hand that holds this flailing soul, he will not let go. There may be days when I cannot breathe. That will stay with me But the deepest stains They will be washed clean And he will not let go When all around my soul gives way He then is all my Today's scripture is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. A hymn is a love song, a love song to God. In this series of messages that we're starting today, we're going to use three of our favorite, most beloved hymns as the jumping off place to look at how we worship God and what our music says about the God we worship. Next week, we'll look at Here I Am, Lord, a song that is still considered to be contemporary but that was actually introduced nearly 50 years ago. 
the week after, just before Thanksgiving, we'll look at a traditional Thanksgiving hymn. Come, ye thankful people, come. The hymn for today is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, one of the most Methodist of Methodist hymns. It was written by Charles Wesley. Charles was the younger brother of John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement. They were two of the 19 children born to the Wesley family in the early 1700s. Both brothers were priests in the Church of England, and both were involved in a movement of renewal that was meant to open up the doors of the church to ordinary people, rather than just the wealthy and the educated, who were mostly the ones being served by the church in those days. In England, the gap between the rich and the poor was great, and most were poor. Eating meat was a rare luxury for most people. The daily diet consisted of bread and potatoes. Diseases like scarlet fever, dysentery, and smallpox were common, and infant mortality was high. Most people never had the chance to learn to read and write, and there were few pastors or open churches outside the cities and larger towns. John Wesley had a vision of bringing hope to people who lived in these conditions. And hope meant knowing the love of God, having their earthly life improved, and knowing their eternal salvation was certain. In that hope, the Methodist movement was born. John began preaching the good news of God's love wherever people would listen, in the streets, outside the coal mines as the day ended, in the marketplaces, and even on the front steps of the churches. Poor people were usually not allowed to enter the churches because they couldn't pay the pew rental fee that was required in those days in most churches. John offered them hope on the front steps instead. And as John offered hope by his preaching, Charles, his musical brother, began writing hymns to bring hope, beautiful lyrical verses that could be taught to people by repetition, since reading wasn't an option for most of them. If Charles had written secular love songs, they would have been filled with passion and longing, dripping with emotion. His hymns to God are as filled with feeling as that. And the words of his hymns could be sung to melodies that people already knew. The hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, is one of those that was written to share hope with ordinary people. It's a hymn about the overwhelming, all-encompassing, never-ending love of God that was given to us in Jesus Christ. This hymn is sung around the world by churches from Pentecostal to Catholic and has been translated into more than 50 languages. It was sung a few years back at the wedding of Prince William and Kate Middleton, and again two years ago at the funeral of Queen Elizabeth. I was thinking about how the tune of a hymn can affect the way we hear and are able to sing along with the hymn. We all know the hymn Amazing Grace, so take that as an example. It is usually sung today to a folk melody that was called New Britain. That's a tune we all know. But it was originally sung to a different tune. And have you ever noticed that you can also sing it to the tune of the theme song from the old TV show Gilligan's Island. Think about how that changes the way we hear it. Today, in our church, we usually sing Love Divine, All Loves Excelling to an old Welsh tune called Heifradal. But through the years, it's been sung to a number of others. Some have sung it to a Dutch folk song called In Babylone. If 
it drags, it can sound like a funeral dirge. Other congregations, even today, sing it to a tune of a military march by Joseph Haydn. What Charles Wesley wants to communicate and celebrate in this hymn is the love of God, divine love. That's where the whole story begins, the story of God's relationship with human beings. And the hymn is a presentation of good Christian theology, the theology of grace. It's the thing that John Wesley preached about every day. Grace is God's favor, God's free, undeserved love for all people. God's grace brought all things into existence. It created human beings. It bestowed on us the divine image, and it continues to transform and renew the whole creation. The Wesleys talked about grace in three ways. First, they talked about prevenient grace, the love that draws us to God, that makes us seek out God and hunger for connection with each other. It's the grace that allows us to see our own incompleteness, but that promises that no matter how badly things go wrong in our lives or in our world, we can never lose the image of God in us or the love of God for us. The love of God for God's whole creation will never end, and we are never beyond God's ability to love us and to restore us. Wesley described this prevenient grace as being like the porch to a house. It's where we prepare to enter. It's the given that we are loved by God, a seeking, beckoning, inviting love. The second way John Wesley talked about grace was as justifying grace. This is the assurance of God's forgiveness and the promise that we are loved and accepted by God. If prevenient grace is the porch, justifying grace is the doorway. And walking through this doorway means we are beginning to live into our identity as a child of God, an identity we can never earn or create for ourselves, but one that comes to us as a gift and can never be taken away. To walk through this doorway is to enter a new future, where we turn toward becoming the person God created us to be, using the gifts with which God created us and fulfilling the calling God has planted in each of our hearts. The third way the Wesleys talked of grace was as sanctifying grace. It's the continuing work of God's saving, transforming love at work in us. In short, it's about us fully living into ourselves as God created us to be. It moves beyond forgiveness or mere acceptance of our identity as beloved children of God. God's goal for humanity is the complete restoration of the divine image in us. Sanctification is that journey on which we become whole people, fully the people God intended us to be, and living our lives toward the world as God intends it to be. If prevenient grace was the porch and justifying grace was the doorway, sanctifying grace represents the rooms of the expansive dwelling of God's presence. It is the process of fully living out our belovedness in ways that lift up the belovedness of those around us. It is about sanctifying grace that this hymn Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, is written. The hymn itself is a prayer addressed to Jesus, but instead of calling him Jesus or Lord, it addresses him as love divine, the love that is greater than all other loves. Jesus, it says, is all compassion through and through. He is love. He is the love of God. He is the joy of heaven that has come down to earth. He is pure, unbounded love. Almost every line of this hymn is a petition, a request asking something. Fix in us your humble dwelling. Visit us with your salvation. Enter every trembling heart. 
The final verse of the hymn is an all-out celebration of sanctifying grace, asking Jesus to finish his new creation in us, make us completely the people we were meant to be, changed from glory into glory until we are lost in wonder, love, and the praise of God. Now imagine the effect of words like those on the people for whom Charles wrote these words, the people who first sang the hymn, poor, hungry, downtrodden people who lived in a bleak time, often in miserable conditions, living lives of struggle. Imagine the effect of hearing for the first time that the purpose of their lives was not to be beaten down constantly by life, but to be loved eternally by the God who created them and to become part of God's plan for renewing the world in love. The Methodist movement was about lifting people up to realize this hope, offering education and health care to the poor, the ability to better their lives as they heard about their own worthiness and the good news of God's love for them. They committed themselves to abolishing slavery, reforming prisons, and caring for orphans. And still today, we continue to sing this hymn to celebrate the great truth that our lives are grounded in the love of God, no matter who we are, where we have come from, or what we're up against in life. Love divine, embodied in Jesus, is the true joy of heaven that has come to people like us. Charles Wesley wrote over 6,000 hymns in his lifetime. Most of them, like this one, are meant to lift up the love of God, to help us be rooted and grounded in it, and to know what Paul, in the letter to the Ephesians, called the breadth and length and height and depth of the love of God. May we know that love and experience it and be transformed by it until we are lost in wonder, love, and praise. Amen.
Good morning, everyone. My name is Tammy Bush. When I came to this church about 10 years ago now, I was on a mission. I was looking for a new church home, one that would welcome me and my husband as we were. I'd started by looking online, and there were so many messages out there that didn't match my values or beliefs at all. But the welcoming message of this church struck just the right note. But I should tell you, I hadn't been to a church in many years, and my husband Gary had been ill for quite some time, well over a year. And all that time, I had been praying and praying day and night. After he got better, and I'm happy to say he's still drag racing and scuba diving, I knew it was time to find a place where I felt welcome, where I could express my faith, and where my relationship with the one eternal spirit could grow. And honestly, I needed to express my gratitude for coming through such a difficult time. I was looking for a new church home, and I was led here to White Bear Lake United Methodist. In this past decade or so, I've grown in ways and through experiences I never could have imagined. I've been given opportunities to grow by being in book discussion groups like Tuesdays at 2, and I've had a chance to join the education team and teach classes or facilitate groups. I've come to worship services and felt such great joy at the music and such inspiration from the messages. I've sometimes been brought to tears, and I bet you have too. I felt the warmth of welcoming here when someone sat beside me the very first Sunday I was here and took the time to really talk with me. And I found friendships and support like no other that I know will last a lifetime. I've had the opportunity to work with an amazing group of women with faith in action to provide help in creative ways to our community partners, especially Willow Lane and Elementary and Century College. I found a church home that reflects my own values and encourages me to act on those values right here where we are. And I've been able to um, experience such great expressions of spiritual connection and commitment because this place these pastors are creative enough and open enough to offer a renewal of baptism, a chance to recommit my faith, and I need to tell you this church, this place, is where I took the step to take my very first communion at well over the age of 50. Your experiences here, of course, are different from mine, but I share some of mine today to remind you what a special place this truly is, what an incredible church home it is for all of us. And after all these years, today I'm blessed to be before you as your church board chair to ask you to support this home, not only with your time and your talents, with your skills and your volunteering, but with the resources you have to keep this church a vibrant and healthy place. As chair, I see how much work the trustees put in to keep this place in good condition with the things we may not always notice, like heating and air conditioning, lighting and computers and paved parking lots. And I see on the staff side just how much effort is put into worship services and other opportunities to grow our faith. So if you feel as I do that this is your church home, please contribute as your heart tells you to and fill out a pledge card. I thank you sincerely for listening and if you have any questions for me as board chair or otherwise, please let me know. Thank you. I invite you now into a moment to just exist without burden, without worry, without anxiety. Take a deep breath and ground yourself in your seat. Touch the earth if you can. Breathe in strength. 
breathe out the heaviness of life. And let us open our hearts and our minds for prayer. Loving God, we come before you yearning for the sanctifying love that transforms our hearts and minds. May your spirit work within us, shaping us into vessels of your grace and compassion. Help us to shed the burdens of our past and embrace the new life you offer. As we journey towards holiness, grant us the strength to reflect your love in our thoughts, words, and actions. Teach us to love ourselves and others as you love us, nurturing relationships that uplift and inspire. May our lives bear witness to your goodness, drawing others close to you. In every challenge, remind us of your presence, guiding us to live out your love boldly. We trust in your power to sanctify us, making us a testament to your unfailing love. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, online friends. I want to take a moment to recognize the amazing work of our Congregational Care Team, or CCT, here at White Bear Lake United Methodist Church. Since 2012, this dedicated team has been providing much needed support for our church family, offering rides to church or medical appointments and delivering meals to those who need a helping hand. Maybe they're recovering from an illness or welcoming a new baby or going through a tough time. Personally, I know the difference CCT makes. When my family and I moved to White Bear Lake in 2013, everything we owned was still packed up and our furniture hadn't even arrived yet. Eva Shipley, a CCT volunteer, showed up with a meal, making us feel loved and supported and welcomed by our new community. This Sunday, November 10th, we're celebrating the CCT volunteers who are always standing by, ready to help. If someone you know could use a little extra support, please reach out to the church office. Let's continue to share God's love with one another through care and compassion. Thank you for joining us today. We invite you to join us in person for worship on Sunday mornings for our Traditions Worship at 9 a.m. and our New Crossing service at 1045. You can always find out more about our church by visiting our website, wblumc.org. Now as we end today, may we go forward in the power of the love of God, in the company of Jesus Christ, and by the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.